This is Vani Hudson from FixedByVani.com, and today we're going to talk about Windows 10 and privacy in a little more detail. First, we're going to look at free software and advertising trends. Secondly, I'm going to break down the information that Microsoft takes from you, or should I say steals from you, when you quote unquote opt in to having your privacy evaded. And third, we'll look at four ways to get Microsoft off your back. I'm going to show you four strategies for opting out. Let's get started. Imagine walking into your car, firing up the GPS, and having it suggest a route that passes by a Greek restaurant that the GPS system received from an advertiser who targeted you based on posts that it discovered on your blog. Or imagine that you drive to Costco and an app on your smartphone pops up and suggests Colgate toothpaste because, well, on your last visit, it remembered that you purchased Colgate toothpaste and now it's offering it to you at a discount. Sounds like a good thing, maybe. Or imagine going to the gym and after working out, you flip open your laptop and an application pops up suggesting Cliff protein bars because it amassed a large set of data from social media and discovered that you have a penchant for Cliff protein bars and therefore it targeted you with that specific ad. Is this science fiction? It's actually already happening. Welcome to the world of privacy evasion. So the chief problem here is that information is free and information is becoming increasingly free with time. And therefore, vendors are having a hard time figuring out new ways to earn revenue. Or at least that's what they tell us. Or that's what we're supposed to believe. And so one of the ways that they generate revenue now is by targeting you with ads. And ads abound, don't they? You go to the web, you've got banners, you've got pop-ups, you've got pop-unders, which are insidious in my opinion. But free information actually has a cost, and that cost is your privacy. And so when Microsoft decided to jump on this whole advertising I'm going to get into your personal business bandwagon. It started to do it aggressively with Windows 10. And here's the strategy. What they do is they say, okay, you can upgrade Windows 7 or Windows 8 for free to Windows 10. But of course, you're opting in to a bunch of pervasive or intrusive information. You're giving Microsoft the freedom to intrude into your privacy. And in the video posted on the screen right now, you can actually log in and you can actually view that video. And so your, your private information has value and vendors are selling your private information to advertisers. And the way that Microsoft does it is they give you what's known as an advertising ID, which is a number that represents everything in your private universe. So the question really becomes, what does Microsoft collect? What is Microsoft taking from you? I'm so glad you asked. There's a lot. There really is. And it starts with a couple of things. Your first name, your last name, your email address, your, po your postal address, your phone number, your passwords, your password hints, um, everything from your age, your gender, your country, uh, the content of your docs, the content of your music, the content of um, your photos, your email subjects, including the body. If you don't believe me, you can actually go to Microsoft's website and uh, look at what I'm talking about. It's, it's kind of appalling. And the thing is that most people aren't going to go there because most people aren't going to wade through 60 pages of legalese. It's there. So after that uh, disconcerting news, I want to show you four ways to opt out of uh, Microsoft's nosiness and kind of get them off your back. So let's look at a couple of strategies. The first thing that we can do here 
is we can uh, go to your settings and your privacy settings. So you click the start button and you click settings. And in here, it all starts with privacy and you'll see a bunch of different options here. And yes, that is a scroll bar. And yes, there are three, six, nine, 12, 13 different settings. And each of these settings have their own options. And there's a lot of them, as you can see. I mean, uh, <laughs> I would encourage you to go through all these to make sure you know, at least so that you're aware of what Microsoft is collecting from you. Um, because, uh, you know, I don't want you to be surprised with anything here. You know, just click through all these settings and, um, <laughs> wow. I, I, it's just, there's a lot. And this list seems to be growing. I mean, I don't remember anything like this in Windows 7. So as you can see, there, there, are, there are a lot of different options here. So your best bet is to start with general and just start turning these things off. These are sort of like the universal settings that comprise the subtree of settings. So I would start with general and then you know proceed from there. Now, the second way for uh, disabling your privacy uh, or basically getting Microsoft off your back is to look at the web. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Click the start button, go to settings, go to privacy, and click this little link right here. It says, manage my Microsoft advertising and other personalized information. If you click that, it opens a web browser, Microsoft Edge leaps on the screen, and you can sign in and when you sign in, you'll see um, different options. For example, you can choose to tell Microsoft if you wanted to use personal ads. Now, of course, if you disable personal ads, that doesn't disable advertising. You'll still get advertisements from Microsoft, but they won't be targeted to you. And so, you know, when you go to Spotify and you look up Taylor Swift, you won't get an ad that has tickets to her next concert. You might just get an ad for Pitbull or Enrique Iglesias. I don't know. And I don't even know if I pronounced his name correctly. But that's another story. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If you click this, you'll see there are options to personalize ads in this browser, personalize ads uh, whenever I use them in my Microsoft account, and there's some other things you need to know. The key things are these settings here. You can um, turn it off, which I advise, although you might, you may discover that it mysteriously turns itself back on after a certain amount of time. So I would advise you to check this site often. Um, I've definitely heard stories of it getting turned back on. So this is one way you can get control of your, your browsing or, or your privacy. The other way, the other and final way to get control of your privacy is just to disable Cortana. So Cortana is Microsoft's officious <laughs> assistant. It's the Siri. It's the Google Now of Windows. And to be honest, until artificial intelligence advances to the point where I'm not able to distinguish between a robot and a computer and a real person, I'm not going to use it. And I don't know how many people are going to use Cortana. Anyway, you won't lose anything by disabling her. What you can do is you can go to the start button and you can type Cortana and then Cortana in search settings, just go ahead and click that and then flip Cortana to off and that will um, turn her off and get her out of your hair. All right. So thanks for viewing my video and uh, I encourage you to subscribe. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, click the the thumbs up or the thumbs down, it doesn't matter to me. Just tell me what you think. And if you think this video sucks, that's fine with me. Just let me know why um, so I can improve in the future. Also, I would love it if you could go to my website. If you go to fixedbyvani.com, you can sign up on my mailing list. I'll give you a free ebook on how to get the most out of Google Chrome, and you'll get uh, more updates like this sent directly to your inbox. And finally, one thing I want to leave you with is a question, and you can respond to this in the comments. But 
I want to know how do you feel about the modern trends in privacy and technology? You know, what do you, you know, do you think this is a, a ripe time to leave Windows and go to Linux because it's, maybe it's inherently um, less intrusive? I don't know. You know, go ahead and reply to that. Let me know in the comments. And uh, I'd love to jump in there and see what you guys are thinking. Thanks.